Hello and welcome back to another Call of Duty Esports video. Now in this video we are going to be talking about the Season 3 Draft which is going to be taking place tomorrow. Today's date is the 9th and tomorrow, as you guessed, it's the 10th and MLG are hosting the Season 3 Call of Duty Draft. It's uh, I really enjoyed watching the last one and I'm really glad that they did it again. I only remembered that they were going to be doing something like this. Uh, when we actually set our eyes on season 3 and all the roster changes and stuff. If you missed any and all, or all, of the ro roster changes which happened over the last 2-3 weeks, then I uploaded a video on it uh, last week, um, I think on a Friday, um, hopefully. There will be a link in the description, I discuss all of the team changes that occurred. This video, I will be linking into that video, I'll be talking about some specific team changes which tie into the rule set which MLG have tried to implement. Now first, my issue with this rule set, I do agree with it, it's quite cool, there is going to be some issues with it which we'll probably see not in this season but in maybe season 4, season 5, whatever, we will probably see these rules, um, you know, make an, made an issue out of um, and I'll explain why a little bit later. Basically, MLG implemented these rules kind of halfway through after teams had basically said that they were swapping, so t some team changes that the, the way team teams would usually, you know, be played out is the team Twitter, you know, so either at Team Envious, at Optic Gaming, at Team Calibre, at Phase Pro, whatever you whatever team it is, would usually tweet out, we have released such and such from the roster, we wish them the best of luck on their endeavours, and uh, the team that they're going to would say, we would like to welcome such and such at whatever on board to the team, and then hashtag TK all day, or hashtag Greenwall, whatever. That's usually how roster changes would happen. But now, uh, we actually had some issues of that, you know, that actually happened this time round. But then MLG implemented this rule set, and the rules I'll read out in a little bit, and I'll put them on screen, whatever. Um, MLG implemented these, and basically MLG is the overseer, as I usually see, they are basically the overseer of... The, all the roster changes and they get the final approval as to whether a player goes from team to team so until MLG have said you cannot officially announce that you've left the team which meant we had a couple of days backlog of MLG kind of verifying transactions but I kind of like it, it's more official, it's more uh, validated and verified to have a, a proper Twitter uh, especially MLG because I without them esports wouldn't be where it is today whether you like what they've done or not it's 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 a given um, so the fact that they're doing this as kind of the overseer the organization that's kind of running this league uh, is fair play but uh, I guess it'll only look as good as they want it to look for season four uh, right now you know people are having issues with it but when it's actually in full effect then I believe people re will really see what MLG were trying to get at. So as for the rules, you may have seen them. There's been a lot of talk about them on Twitter. I know a lot of pro players have been pretty vocal about them. Basically, uh, to qualify for to be picked up for a team, you have to be one of the players that qualified for the league. So these are 48 players which played at MLG Anaheim, which placed top eight in the international bracket. They have automatically qualified for this um, for this season three COD league and. Basically, if you drop a player, so say uh, say Optic dropped Clayster, they could only pick a player who had qualified for the league, so out of the 48, they could only pick that player to go on their roster because they qualified for the league, if that makes sense. Optic, I must clarify, Optic haven't dropped Clayster, Clayster's still on the roster. In fact, Optic haven't made any team changes. They made that quite clear right at the start of the week that they weren't making any team changes, which was good because I was a Greenwall fan. Team owners actually own the league spot so this is to avoid players sketching and whatever and basically making it so that the team can't if a player sketch that basically means that uh, the team can still play they just have to pick another player up basically with phase red being disbanded and um, I discussed it in the last video phase red was basically abolished team owner so that was temper uh, there might be another leader I know acid used to you know do some sort of stuff in regards to the esports team on phase pro but with phase red getting abolished uh phase temper had the spot but no team to give it to because phase black had qualified so they had to figure out a way and i know there was a meeting with all the team organizations and owners that um you know ha are involved in the college community and they decided together where this spot was going to go to because it's only right that it goes to one spot now, my personal opinion, I would have given it to the top five, the fifth team from the COD League, uh, from the open bracket at MLG Anaheim. I would have given it them. 
that's fair, but uh, you know, a deal's gone down between Chris Blevins and he was a former Curse Cod manager. He now owns the spot. Now, as I'm recording this, no team has been announced. However, uh, there's a high possibility because it's getting to the point where you know it's a matter of days away from he's going to announce his branding and the team name and whatnot for his new team, which is going to play in the Cod League. So, as I'm recording this, no team has been announced, but the chances are by the time this video has gone up, the team has been announced, and if it has, I will leave a link in the description to any Twitters or whatever that the team has. Um, so basically, team owners now own the league spot, which is a definitely a right move. Now, here's the important bit. Teams are only allowed to drop one player. Any players that leave the team after that must file for free agency. If they do not, they keep their spot on the roster. So a good example of this would be Team Envious. We know Parasite and Study were released or dropped or filed for free agency. Basically, what happened there... Uh, study was dropped he was the forcible drop from the roster so they basically met up and they said study I'm sorry uh, you're gonna go and that was team envious's forceful drop from the roster now if parasite really wanted to he could have very easily stayed on that roster if he wanted to because team envy had forcibly dropped a player from their roster before season 3 starts now season 3 is going to be big because it's going to tie into a PAX event or something like, along the lines of that so chances are uh, all the teams are reshuffling their rosters now in preparation for that and it may tie in with Columbus and stuff for season 4 and whatnot. So basically Parasite if he wanted to this is where this rule could you know kick off in future seasons because once a team has dropped one player We've seen it before, some teams like to drop three players, two players, one player, you know, from their roster at a time. So, you know, basically, unless those players basically say, that's it, I don't want no more of this team, uh, providing the team has already dropped one player, forcibly dropped one player. Um, so, in example of Team Envy, um, Envy forcefully dropped Study, but if Parasite wanted to, he could stay on that team. That's It's a really important rule, that one. All transactions must go through MLG and are not official to until they are approved. Now I know at MLG have been tweeting out when players have swapped teams, which is pretty cool. Um, I just wish again for season four, it will probably be you know perfect to the way that this roster change is done. And basically, uh, the final rule is the fact that teams will have an opportunity to draft players and to complete an 18 roster for starts for subs. Basically, um, if they wanted to, I know there's a few teams that are gunning for attach. Now these teams are the ones that have qualified through the open bracket because they have the first picks in the draft which is taking place tomorrow on MLG.TV. Other than that, basically the teams that played the highest in the International League will basically pick up last. So Evil Geniuses will pick last, Justice will pick up first. The full running order is as follows, Justice will pick first, followed by Elevate, then by Rise Nation, then by Optic Nation, then Denial, then after denial, we have whatever Ble Blevdog's team is that will be picking after denial. After that, we do have Team Calibre, then FaZe, then Team Envy, then Curse, Optic Gaming, and then Evil Geniuses finishing off. There's four rounds of that to pick up four players. However, some teams may require more picks as they do not have four pit players already on the team going into the draft. Basically, you have four starters and four subs. Basically, uh, Optic already has their roster of four. I'm using Optic. In fact, I'll use EG as an example. Obviously, EG have their roster of four. TP, AX, Karma, and Crim6 on their roster. They have to pick up four um, subs, which could they, which they could move into the starter position, but the chances are they won't. Uh, but basically, they're substitutes, so any player that can't make the match will fill in for said player. They have four rounds. However, a team like Blevdogs, as it stands, only has Classic on the team. So they may have to have additional picks in order to get their roster of eight. So they have the four starters and the four substitutes for the team. Well, basically, that is it for this video. And again, these are the official rules for the MLG COD League Season 3. Um, again, I may make a video following on next week about the, the teams coming out of the draft. But again, the draft tomorrow is quite interesting and it's one to watch, especially if you're a huge fan of the esports community. You may not understand it, but it is crucial. Some, team, some teams' picks and placings will be reliant on these uh, draft picks tomorrow. So again, I hope you enjoyed this video. And again, if you didn't see my uh, Roaster Mania video or Roaster Changes video last week, please do go and watch it. But again, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'm going to stop it before 10 minutes. Hope you've enjoyed. Thank you for watching. And I will see you guys on the next video.